the stories of superhuman strength. A mother lifting a Chevy off her teenage son to save his life. Stories of people hurling themselves over six foot walls. People ripping doors off to save the lives of people burning in a home. Feats of superhuman strength, highly adrenalized. Feats of superhuman strength that they used to call hysterical strength because they believed it came from adrenaline. But it comes from something far, far more powerful than adrenaline. It comes from elevated emotion. Emotional states that we get to when we rise beyond fear, beyond the limbic system, beyond the bounds of fight, flight and freeze. Today we seem to think that it's normal to one day be told that we're suffering from depression, some kind of angst and burnout and stress, that we're suffering from some physical, psychological or emotional disorder or disease, some kind of state that is going to keep us prisoner, not allowing us to do what we need to do. We think it's normal being diagnosed, having some kind of burden, some heavy limitations put on us. One in four in each family is depressed or addicted. People believe that their personality disorder is a lifelong sentence. People believe so much. They say, I am anxious. I am stressed. I am suffering this or that disease or disorder. And they wear those shackles for a lifetime. But that is not normal. And that's what we teach. It is by no means the norm. People achieve superhuman strength. Feats of overcoming disease every single day. What is normal is to access energized emotion when we need it just like the mom who lifts the chevy to save her teenage son we are capable of the very same feats we're not only capable it's part of who we are it's part of the journey and part of what we need to realize to get to where we need to go to fulfill our life purpose we're gonna need one day to overcome obstacles and hurdles that we possibly have been entrained to believe are limits. But that is not normal. Every time we're able to get out of our limbic system, we're able to elevate our emotions to such a point where a tipping point, a paradigm shift is reached. We're capable of superhuman feats. Many people today have become believers. Believers in their stories, limitations. That once someone gives you some diagnosis, you're stuck with it. Come on, this is not normal. This is not how it works. You're capable of anything you put your heart to. Never mind your mind. An elevated emotion has enough energy to lift a car or lift any kind of block that is stopping you from actualizing your full potential. There is a way, and that's the new belief. Overcoming anything to the contrary is our life's work. When we want to understand the neuroscience behind your emotions, your highest self. Berkeley PhD students did a major, major study and found that 400% more power is found in EQ than IQ. In today's world, your IQ, how you do math, how you calculate and remember and put things together is far from enough to get you there. Rational thinking is dead. There's too much information. The world has become too large, 
too technically advanced to be rational. Just look around you and understand why people are naturally losing their minds. What's going to bring us back is the heart. Is the heart-brain coherence, the emotional intelligence. There is nothing stronger than the power of love. Understand that when you are in love, fear leaves the room. And this is when you're capable of crossing those bridges, of healing, of transforming yourself. Self-love is the beginning of the journey from IQ to EQ. And emotional intelligence will take us through to being able to see without seeing. It'll take us to CQ, to be able to contemplate ourselves and our lives exactly as we are, without the boundaries, the masks, the fear. The biggest part of your body is emotion, is heart, is passion. By far the biggest and most powerful part of your brain, your neurobiology, is your emotional mind. Not your EQ, not your limbic system, not your survival mind. You're not an animal. You're a divine, creative human being that has been designed to overcome to achieve a specific, deep purpose. Nothing can or should stand in the way of that purpose. And today we know all we need to do is tap into our emotion, tap into the power of love. Love that becomes inspiration, intuition, all extrasensory, far beyond your five senses. Love becomes intention, inspiration, insight. You become extrasensory when you tap into the emotions of love. So how we access the power of our emotions is by stopping thinking, by stopping the endless loop of thoughts that go nowhere. They're circular, 85,000 thoughts a day keeping us stuck away from new and heightened emotion that can really change and shape our lives. People are trying to take LSD, ketamine, ayahuasca, all sorts of things to try and awaken the IQ, but no. You can put, you can put the thinking brain aside and access your emotional mind. When you do, the whole brain lights up far greater than it does with any external stimulant. This is where the research is going and it's what it will teach us, that the power of love, gratitude, can energize us like nothing else on earth. Moving beyond the confines and the limits of the reptilian brain, the primal brain is something that we can all do. Our self-preserving behavior is more active than it's ever been before in history. In a world that is changing on an hour-to-hour, day-by-day basis. Nothing is certain and nothing stays the same. The reptilian brain, the primal ego, bases itself in survival and fear, fueled by trauma. It tries to solve problems that are virtually unsolvable until we show up as who we really are, as spiritual, emotional, body, heart, mind beings. When we show up in total, we become authentic, we become powerful, and we are able to overcome primal survival instincts. How do we do it? How do we stop thinking on this level, in the downstairs 
compartments of our brain. We become still. We start managing our breathing. We start to show up for ourselves and manage our thoughts, our feelings, our behaviors. And in so doing, we change the very consequences, the very places that we're headed to can change when we interrupt our behavior chain. When we light up forebrain, midbrain and hindbrain together through breath, through stillness, through meditation and contemplation, we can change the body's vital functions, respiration, heart rates, and every dis-ease and disorder that is in between can be overcome. Yoga itself means union. We need to put the body, heart, mind together. When we do, we access 100% brain power. The brain lies incredibly dormant. And when we're stuck, we start thinking like mammals and reptiles. We start thinking small. We start thinking limitations and only small parts of our brain glow. Every other piece of energy and resource is used for survival. Survival that we don't really need. We're not being chased any longer by saber-toothed tigers. So we have to show our brain, show ourselves. We have to shift the whole paradigm and the narrative and when we're in emotional agony, understand that we can easily overcome it through contemplative practice, through breath, stillness, consciousness. And we're all capable of doing it in any given moment in time. So in this way, we're limitless and we don't even know it. We're unconscious, sleeping until we become extrasensory and override a brain that is controlling us for survival. The science is in that you can have a profound effect through all of these practices on your immune system, your cardiovascular system, lymphatic systems, all systems within, even bacteria and viruses. Nothing is beyond your control not control based in fear, control based on purpose, on your intention, on how you present the meaning of your life to yourself. Science has shown us what religion and spirituality have always tried to teach. We can all go within to access the power to overcome any obstacles that we face. We don't go out we go with him. What the wisdom traditions and the Desert Fathers and all prophets and mystics and teachers around the world have tried to teach us is that biochemically and neurologically we can activate internal power to overcome any external obstacles. When life brings trauma and agony and pain, we must understand that when we are ready, we have the power to overcome all the emotions that hold us back from happiness, peace, experiencing reality and bliss. We need nothing external to create the transformation. Those wisdom traditions talked about waking up, spiritual awakenings, and this is what they mean when they teach us to awaken the body, awaken to the power of our emotions, love our hearts, and in turn, access 100% of our brain to light it up like a candle. To light it up as we've seen with neural imaging, just by the power of our intention we are all extrasensory. 
we all have the power of intention, intuition, powers beyond the intellect. The intellect is a beggar. The mind needs a master. And that's you. If you want to elevate yourself, you need to elevate your emotions on purpose with practice. And it's in that way that you retake the steering wheel of your biology, your cognition, and your soul. This is an emotional life. Your brain's hippocampus can be enlarged in times of stress. And through meditative practice, science has shown us that we can change the size of that emotional center. That hippocampus can get larger or smaller with the power of your own intention. This shows us how much power and control we have to guide and direct our emotion rather than let unmanaged emotion run riot. Emotion is based on the most two powerful aspects of who we are. Fear and love. Literally, psychiatry and psychology through to spirituality and religion have been pointing us in this direction forever. Yet, sometimes it has been misunderstood. Perfect love casts out fear. In other words, when we elevate those emotions, we can cast out fear that is turned into depression, overwhelm, stress, and even personality disorders. Are they treatable? Absolutely. Not only are these things treatable, they're part of the journey. They're the dark night of the soul that we need to traverse. It is the duty and responsibility of each and every one of us to transcend and overcome fear. That is the journey. That is our calling. To become love, heart, emotion, rather than just mind. Running on fear, running on reptilian responses. So as Carl Jung said, one of my favorite psychiatrists, is that the animal, the anima, represents the divine side of our human psyche. Just as dolphins have a brain twice the size of ours, they are highly emotional, highly prized and blessed with EQ. Dolphins, in fact, spend their time far, far more wisely than we do. Chasing money, chasing stress, chasing busyness. Jung believed that animals live in contact with the secret, a secret of absolute knowledge of the unconscious. And it's these emotions that open animals and close down humans. With fear, animals tend to forget everything and rise. And we tend to forget everything and run. This is the way our survival mind is designed. So even though the body becomes subconsciously programmed and conditioned to the mind, to all our thoughts, feelings, memories and emotions, to everything that has happened to us in the past, we're conditioned. The mind is trained and the same automatic emotional responses start leading our lives. We start operating with a limited mindset. Disappointment, fear, frustration, anger, all of these things set in and we are led to believe a lie. We are led to believe that we are stuck here, that this is our fate, but it's not the case. What we need to realize is that we can reclaim our power by changing our state of being, by elevating our emotions. 
by creating a new future with new intentions, with our extrasensory capabilities. We're able to look into the unknown, the uncertain. We're able to look into a new future. And this is the start of any transformational process. When you begin to really dig deep and start feeling emotions, higher emotions with higher intention and intelligence, these elevated emotions create new conditions in your body, heart and mind. New conditions create a new future. And we are capable of any future we put our body, hearts and minds to. We know that thoughts have the power to make us sick or well. These thoughts are influenced by past experiences and the environment. They create the same life, the same boundaries, the same prison that we might be used to. But we can break free from the cycle of these repetitive patterns at any given time by switching from victim to master of our own stories. What this all means is that you, right here, right now, have the capacity to step out of your situation. You get to change and then regulate your emotions. Practice will help you enlarge the hippocampus allowing you to feel more emotion, to move past trauma, stuckness and hurt, to move past despair. The key to a paradigm shift for each and every one of us. Where focus goes, energy flows. It's all about what you start to focus on. When you withdraw from your external influence, the world's influence on who you have become, you will no longer be controlled by your emotions because it is in fact your emotions that will set you free. So you can grab the wheel of your mind and steer in any direction that you want to go with the power of intention, with the power of your extrasensory self by bringing all your faculties and talents together you will be able to access the power of love, the greatest power in the universe. Perfect love casts out fear. It casts out fear from your mind, your body, and your heart. And when we cast that fear out, we're capable of greater things than we possibly could have imagined. when we understand that emotions are messengers, as deep and dark as they can be in the beginning, we can understand that these emotions are guiding us to heal all the deeper aspects of ourselves and bring us to a place of wisdom, of authentic power, of true freedom. And this is what life is about. Because it's unlimited, we must go all the way and be fully awake Fully human, fully alive. When you learn how to use your body to open your heart and free your mind, anything is possible.